eve of the American Revolution and their struggles, particularly the Shawnee, uh, with, uh, as the British colony kind of begins to fall apart and Americans begin to rise, uh, the Shawnee are, are trapped and trying to figure out which, which course to take. Do they ally with the British or do they stay allied to the Virginians? That scene ran, uh, let's see, the day before yesterday, it runs again this afternoon. Um, and yesterday we unveiled a new scene called War Party, which was the uh, part two of that narrative. Unplugged is a bit behind the scenes. We're interested in talking about uh, producing American Indian public history, uh, having a conversation with you about contemporary Native communities, uh, the relationship of the past and the present. And uh, to help us along, I have two guests with us who are uh, some of our uh, actors that we've brought in from out of the area. Don McLernan, hello, and Michael Spears. Uh, I can just give a brief uh, introduction to the two of them, and then I'd like them to say a few words about themselves. But as a group, uh, we hope to just say a few words and then engage you as the, as the audience with questions and, and a conversation about uh, Native America and uh, producing public history at this historic place, but also uh, contemporary uh, issues and things that emerge with civic engagement. Zal McLarnon is Hulk Papa uh, Lakota. He lives today in Los Angeles. I will let him give you a little bit about his credits, but um, the one that I will the one that I will emphasize the current TV series that he appears on with Sarah Michelle Geller called Ringer it comes on the uh, CW network. So I'm placed the bad guy. <laughs> uh, and Michael Spears, who uh, comes to us from the Western United States, uh, he is a uh, champion singer and dancer from the powwow circuit. He's been doing film since he was a very young man. The one credit I'll give for him is uh, his first film was as Otter in Dances with Wolves when you were, hello, Michael? Oh, wow. 11 and 12. 11 and 12. Oh, All right. Very good. I remember that. So, Zahn, would you please say a few words about yourself to the audience? And good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes. I don't hear it. No. Barely hear him. No. All right, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Hey, um, yeah, but, uh, my name is Zahn McLaren. I am Hunkapapa Lakota, along with Scottish Irish. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know, exactly. Yay. Yay. I, I, think that, I think that deserves a clap for sure. Um, I grew up. <laughs> a clap. Easy. easy. <laughs> I, grew up, uh, I grew up in Montana, uh, Wyoming, Nebraska. Um, live out in Los Angeles now and this guy is just getting on my nerves <laughs> been getting on my nerves for three weeks now no, I'm just kidding me and Michael have worked together quite a bit uh, we just finished a film called Yellow Rock with uh, Michael Bean who was John Connor and the Terminator um, that's gonna be doing the uh, uh, festivals starting um, a couple of weeks out in uh, Los Angeles and then up in San Francisco at the Na uh, American Indian Film Festival. Um, yeah, I'm currently doing a show called The Ringer on CW Network. Michelle Keller, the character's name is Bodaway, Bodaway Makawi, the Shoshone mobster, kind of owns a strip club and just a bad, bad guy. Um, I have a lot of fun doing those bad guy parts. Seem to. Uh, <laughs> Seem to do a lot of them. Now he does one for the foundation at Chinusa. Yeah, Chinusa's uh, the, the angry Shawnee guy who, who uh, decides to take off back to the Ohio Valley during the revolution and not, not necessarily a bad guy. He was just an uptight guy, very angry, and he was a warrior. He was from uh, uh, the warrior clan, and, and he uh, goes back to the Ohio Valley, and the whole way back he's, um, he's fighting. And, and uh, taking care of his uh, his people and, and and trying to be the best person he possibly can, I guess, because he, he loves his people. Um, difficult situation. And Michael plays the uh, uh, Mokochi, the, the peace. Not the Mokochi. Is it Mokochi? Yeah. yeah the Mokochi, the peace peace uh, peace man of the peace. Uh, what would you say, band? The peaceful division, uh, the people that give the chiefs for the, that division of Shawnee leadership. Michael, would you mind uh, saying a few words about yourself? 
few words about yourself. <laughs> All right, yes. Thank you guys for coming and listening to us. Uh, we've uh, been doing this. This is my second run doing the show. Um, I come. Uh, I live in Montana, up in the Gallatin Valley uh, at the moment, and I've been acting, as, as Bucket said, since uh, I was 11 and 12 in Dancing with Wolves. I've been doing about a film or two a year ever since. Um, I've got three films coming out this year, uh, one called Guns, Girls, and Gambling. Uh, watch for that one coming in the theaters. Uh, we have uh, Yellow Rock, Don and I, uh, and my little brother Eddie Spears as well is in that. Uh, and we have another one called uh, Hell's Gate that is supposed to be premiering sometime before the end of the year. Uh, primarily do westerns, uh, just because of my look. Uh, <laughs> so Far From Sayoto is a, is a show that uh, I was asked to, to audition for out in Los Angeles while I was doing Yellow Rock. Now let me get this straight, Michael. We went to Los Angeles to find actors to work at Colonial Williamsburg. Come on. <laughs> Go ahead, please continue. Yeah. I think that's an infrastructure problem. <laughs> 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 anyway, yeah, we came and I came and auditioned, and I, I, I love coming here. I love uh, uh, interpreting uh, the role of Neowa. Uh, he is a uh, Mikoche Shani. Uh, the Mikoches were, uh, at the time, uh, the chiefs of the nations, uh, the, so to speak, the, the, uh, the shot callers, if you want to say, the people who uh, decided uh, where the people were going, what they were going to do, things like that. Uh, Neowa, in the, in the show, is uh, kind of torn between the two. Uh, his father, is Nimwa, who is first brother to Cornstalk. I don't know if we all are familiar with Chief Cornstalk at all in his story. Uh, he, uh, uh, after, during the show, after Sayoto, before the war party, ends up being murdered and hacked to death in the, in the fort and, uh, by, by, by the militia. And so the scene, Sayoto, you see Neewa uh, in the middle of it. Uh, he is really trying to mediate the peace and once peace for the people, he doesn't want us to war anymore and wants us to get along. Um, if you see the show, you'll, you'll, I think you'll be able to see that, the, the, the tug and the pull back and forth. And that happened a lot, a, lot, a long time ago, you know, with, with people being uh, faction moved and war and things like that. And then when you see the war party um, is when, I don't mean to ruin the show, but uh, it's actually when Neo is swayed back to his people back to fight for freedom for his people because because of what happened to Cornstalk and uh, uh, 11 others in the fort. Well, if you guys are here later this afternoon and want to come and see Revolutionary City, uh, so far from Sido is one one scene out of uh, maybe five or so that they play later on today. Um, I just want to say a few words about public history production. It, it was easy to do American Indian public history. That is to put narratives about Indian people out into a street theater or to uh, create an interpretive setting, say at a, a longhouse village or at a historic site. The entire eastern seaboard would have Indian people working in this business, mm -hmm. but they don't. If you go out to museums, pick a state. There's a few, there's a few areas that have uh, projects up and going, but doing this type of work is, is pretty difficult. Uh, in the 18th century, if you were to look around this landscape, at times, there was hundreds, hundreds of Native people in town. Um, the newspapers, if you open them up, even the ones we print today, you can't read a newspaper without seeing a narrative about American Indian peoples, whether it's Nova Scotia or Georgia or Carolina. Um, if you would go in, inside the coffee house, possibly you would find someone of American Indian descent working as a servant or as a slave. If you were at the Capitol, you go to the tour, you'll see the executive chambers wampum belts, portraits of the chiefs that are on the walls inside. But this place today does not have a large population of Native people. And because of colonialism, the large uh, demographics or groups of Indian peoples are no longer in this region. Uh, and so one of those tasks is to bring people back. We really did go to Los Angeles to find actors. Uh, we had to dialogue with the Shawnee, who are no longer in Virginia. They're today in Oklahoma. We had to broaden our, our horizon of, of engagement with, with communities to, to participate, uh, to get some of the language, for instance. We use Shawnee in, in, in our scene later today. Um, that language is only spoken by about 500 people on the planet today. Mm. 500 people, that's it. That's all the stick to Shawnee language. So finding somebody not only willing to work with us, 
uh, but also somebody who was fluent in Shawnee to give them phrases and to pronounce, pronounce it, pronounce it back to us and give us some coaching. Difficult, difficult. So uh, the endeavor of this institution, I, I'm just saying, it, it's no small feat, uh, and it's a lot of support, and I'm very proud to have uh, these gentlemen with us. I'd like to get a round of applause for Buck. They really worked hard. We did. Very knowledgeable man. So if you have any questions relating to anything with that in regards to the Shawnee history, to Native history, we're going to open the floor, and I will repeat the question just in case somebody else can't hear it over here. But uh, if you have some questions or some thoughts or some comments, we'd, we'd, we'd love to hear from you and make this uh, interactive at this point.